Lithium ion batteries are by far the most common type of battery that we use nowadays. And they use in all sorts of things, ranging from mobile phones all the way to electric vehicles. They're also the type of battery that I used in my homemade electric bicycle and that I am using right now in the homemade electric scooter. A video on that will be appearing very soon. But because lithium ion batteries are so common, I thought it'd be a good idea to take a look at how they actually work. So in order to understand what a lithium ion battery is, it might be useful to first know what a lithium ion is in the first place. So first of all, lithium is of course an element. So I have a little handy per periodic table here and you can see lithium is the element right below hydrogen, right there. And then of course an ion is an atom with a certain electric charge. So when an atom is either positively or negatively charged, we call it an ion. In this case, a lithium ion is a lithium atom with a charge of plus one. So it's a positive charge of exactly one. And we write that as Li plus or lithium plus. This is what a lithium ion is, a positively charged lithium atom. Okay then, so now let's take a look at a schematic drawing of the inside of a lithium ion battery. So as you can see, all the way on the left, we've got a layer of graphite or carbon. It's that kind of black stuff, right? And then in the center, we've got a so-called electrolyte. Now the electrolyte is some kind of gel or some kind of liquid that contains lots of lithium ions. And then on the right side, we've got a layer of lithium cobalt oxide. Lithium cobalt oxide is a salt. Just like sodium chloride is kitchen salt, it's a salt that you're used to, lithium cobalt oxide is also a salt and it's solid. It probably doesn't taste like the salt you're used to, but it's chemically a salt. And it contains lithium atoms, as you've probably noticed from its name. As you've probably noticed in the drawing, the negative side of our lithium ion battery is the layer of graphite, and the positive side of our battery is the lithium cobalt oxide. Now I should point out that currently we're looking at a discharged lithium ion battery, so the battery in its current state cannot be used to power something, it's empty. So first of all, let's take a look at the charging process, right? How do we actually charge a lithium ion battery? Well, of course, we connect a charging device. So let's just do that in our drawing as well. There we go. And of course, you know, battery charging basics, we connect the positive side of the charging device to the positive side of a battery, and we connect the negative side of our charging device to the negative side of a battery, right? This makes sense. So now what's going to happen is something very interesting. First of all, electrons are going to start moving from the lithium cobalt oxide into the positive side of our charger. Because electrons are negatively charged particles, and the positive side of our charger is, well, very positive, and so positive and negative attract each other, so the negative electrons are attracted by the positive side of our charger and start moving into the positive side of the charger. At the same time, lithium ions are getting released by the lithium cobalt oxide. So what's happening here is we have lithium cobalt oxide and we're detaching the lithium from the cobalt oxide. And so we're left with just cobalt oxide and loose lithium ions. And those lithium ions will be moving into the electrolyte, you know, where all the other lithium ions are. And then on the other side of the battery, the opposite is happening. So here, electrons are moving from the negative side of our charging device into the graphite. And what happens here is that lithium ions from the electrolyte are absorbed into the graphite to form a graphite-lithium combination. So to sum up what's just happened, on one side of the battery, we are removing electrons and lithium ions are being moved into the electrolyte. And on the other side of the battery, lithium ions are being taken from the electrolyte into the graphite, and we're putting in electrons using our charging device. And this keeps going for a while until the battery is charged. Now there is a very fundamental principle about this process that is actually rather obvious, but I want to point it out anyway because it's so important. Systems in nature 
want to be in a low energy state, right? Things want to be in an energy state that is as low as possible. So for example, this rubber band wants to be unstretched. It wants to be as relaxed as possible. It doesn't want to be stretched. So you'll never see this rubber band going from unstretched to stretched unless an external force, like my hands, forces the rubber band to be stretched. That's what we did in our battery. The charging device forced the battery into a higher energy state against its will, you could say it like that. The battery wants to be in the low energy state that it was in before the charging process, but the charging device forced it into a higher energy state by stealing electrons from one side and pumping them into the other side. That also means something else. If I force this rubber band into its high energy state, it's going to want to go back to its low energy state as soon as possible. So when I give it the opportunity to do so, it's going to go back to its low energy state. That also happens in our battery. As soon as we give the battery the opportunity to return to the previous state, the low energy state, if we connect a light bulb to our battery, the whole reaction that we just saw will happen once again, only now in reverse. So electrons will be moving from the graphite into our light bulb and from the light bulb back into the lithium cobalt oxide and lithium ions will start leaving the graphite again into the electrolyte and from the electrolyte into the lithium cobalt oxide. So we're moving all the lithium back to the other side of the battery and in the process we're also moving all the electrons back through the light bulb and that powers our light bulb because the electrons lose energy when they go through the light bulb and that energy is used to create light. And that is how a lithium ion battery works. That's what's happening right now if you're using a laptop, kind of like down there underneath your keyboard, or if you're watching this on a phone right behind me. That's the process that is powering your devices. Now there are a couple of reasons why we like lithium ion batteries so much. First of all, there is their incredible energy density compared to other types of batteries. So lithium ion batteries can store a pretty large amount of energy per kilogram of batteries that we use compared to other types of batteries that we have. Now I say other types of batteries because compared to the energy density of something like diesel fuel or, or petrol, the energy density of a lithium ion battery is still pretty low. Another reason why we like lithium ion batteries is the, their high power density. So just like there is a number for energy density, you know, how much energy can we store per kilogram of batteries, there is also a number that says how much power can one kilogram of batteries deliver. And this number is also rather high on lithium ion batteries, which is why it's very suitable for devices that demand lots of power to work, such as electric cars. Another thing that many people don't realize, but is actually very important to how practical a battery is in real world use, is that lithium ion batteries really don't care when you charge them and when you discharge them. So in other types of batteries, it's sometimes important to discharge the battery entirely before you start recharging it. With lithium ion batteries, it really doesn't matter. If you have a battery at 90% charge, you can still go, well, I want to get it up to 100 and you can charge it up to 100. If your battery is at 40% charge, you can charge it up to 60% and disconnect it again and start using it. So if I have my phone and it's at 40% charge, but I need to go somewhere and I, I know I'll probably need more juice, I can plug it in for half an hour, charge it up to like 60% and then disconnect it again and go wherever I need to go. And it doesn't matter, right? It's not going to destroy my battery or degrade its lifespan because I didn't entirely discharge or charge it. And there are many other reasons we like lithium ion batteries. There are also many reasons we don't like them, such as the fact that the electrolyte inside them is flammable so that when the battery overheats or gets damaged in some way, the electrolyte can escape and can catch fire and do all sorts of nasty things. But anyway, now you know a little more about them. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video and of course, thank you for watching.